My friends trapped me in a bedrock prison and challenged me to break out of it, but this seemed impossible. The prison was called the TNT prison, and on the outside it looked like a giant block of TNT, but on the inside the rooms were completely made of bedrock making them impossible to mine through. And if that wasn't hard enough, I had to beat the whole prison on half a heart. If I took a single hit of damage, I would die instantly and lose the prison. My escape starts now. Right off the bat I noticed even though my hunger was full, my health was stuck on half a heart. I was in some sort of bedrock trap in the middle of a pool of lava. There was a crafting table on the wall. Then I noticed this TNT fall in the back of the room, and I saw a line of TNT leading towards me. This was not good. If any of the TNTs close to me blew up, I would definitely take half a heart of damage and die immediately. I used F5 and I noticed there was three item frames on the bedrock above me, two pieces of iron ingots, and one stick. So I took my time and carefully collected each piece, not letting it fall in the lava. But this didn't really help me that much, because all I could craft with this was a weighted pressure plate, iron nuggets, an iron sword, or shears, and none of those were going to get me out of the bedrock. So I had to try to figure out what to do. I started looking around the room seeing if there was anything I missed. I was clicking around in the lava trying to find a hidden chest or something, and I noticed another TNT fall. I was running out of time. Eventually though, while looking around the lava, I realized there was a weird patch of flowing lava behind me. I clicked around the center of it, and that's when I found a furnace with an iron block inside of it. At first, I wasn't really sure how this was going to help me. I knew the block was going to be useless, so I turned it into ingots, but I had no idea what I needed to craft, and I was running out of time as the TNT was getting closer. I turned on the mode in the crafting table that showed you what you could craft to come up with an idea. Now I had a plan. I used six of my iron and a stick to craft rails. Then I used the other five to make a minecart. By doing this, I could put one of the rails on the bedrock next to me and get inside the minecart. This pulled me out of the bedrock trap. When I got out of the minecart, I spawned out a piece of bedrock to the side. I mined my minecart and then I carefully got on top of the rail and collected that too. Then I used the same trick to get on the piece of bedrock that was trapping me in before. Now that I was this high, I thought maybe I would have a chance to mine the TNT out of the ceiling so it didn't fall on me. And I got to it just in time as the second to last piece was ignited. I finally had a moment to catch my breath because I was no longer in any immediate danger. I started mining these item frames that I had left here before because I was in such a rush I didn't collect them. After that, I carefully dropped down onto this piece of bedrock and shifted over the lava. This way I could collect the crafting table after I mined it without it falling in the lava. Then I started looking around. One side of this hallway had a doorway that seemed like I had to go to. The other side was just a bedrock wall. So I made my way towards the doorway side. I started figuring out how I was going to cross this lava and that's when I remembered you could actually block lava with rails. So I carefully placed two rails and hopped in, being very careful not to bump the lava because I would die immediately since I'm on half the heart. It took me 8 rails to get to the other side, and collecting them would be risky, so for now I left them. I started going to see what was in this doorway. There was a giant drop, and at the bottom I could see some water beneath some glass, and I could also see two zombies. My first instinct was to minecart clutch, but here's the problem. The zombies would probably kill me before I could get out of the minecart, so that wasn't an option. If I couldn't minecart clutch, I didn't see how I could get down there alive though, and that's until I remembered something pretty obvious. I could craft a minecart with TNT since I successfully defused that TNT from before. I carefully pushed the minecart with TNT over the edge. This was like dropping an aerial bomb that would explode on impact, and when it did, it broke all the glass revealing the water and killed both zombies. I collected the rail I used to place it, and then I hopped down into the new area. Right off the bat, I noticed there was an iron trap door with a 1x1 one one tunnel. However, I didn't see anything in the room I was in that would allow me to power the trap door, so I went on and continued exploring the other rooms. There was another room that had lava pouring out of the wall, and there was a piece of polished blackstone with a TNT behind it. Obviously I could mine the blackstone to get to the TNT, but that didn't seem correct, so I ignored that for now and kept looking around. The final thing in the room was a chest with some suspiciously placed items, but I got 6 bamboo and 2 cobweb. I put down my crafting table and started trying to think what I could do. I knew I could use the bamboo to create 3 sticks, but I didn't know what that would do for me and I usually hold off on crafting anything until I have a plan. With the items I had, I basically had no idea what to do, so I started seeing if I missed anything. I tried to find a hidden chest in the lava and that didn't work. I used F5 to look into the TNT room and I didn't see anything new, so I was pretty stumped. I had no idea. So I started thinking about what I did have in the room and that's when I started coming up with an idea. If I could get this polished blackstone block, I could use it to create a button. And if I used that button next to the iron trap door, I could actually activate it and crawl through this little tunnel. But the problem is I didn't have any way to mine that blackstone, except if I could light that TNT. 
If the TNT blew up the blackstone, I would get the block, but I had no items to light it. And this is when I started understanding what I needed to do. I needed to make a fishing pole, and I had what I needed to craft the three sticks, but I didn't know how to turn the tube cobweb into string without a sword. That's until I remembered I had water. I went back to where I landed and placed the cobweb in the water, and it immediately turned it into string. So now I could craft the fishing pole. And you might be wondering, how is a fishing pole going to help at all? Well, if I throw the fishing pole through the lava, it actually becomes a flaming entity, and I can use it to ignite the TNT. Then I grabbed the TNT with the fishing pole and pulled it towards the blackstone. It blew it up, and I now had the blackstone block I needed. I turned that into a polished blackstone button, and I went back to the trap door. I collected the crafting table to bring with me and used the button to get underneath the trap door. Then I mined the button back because I might need it later and placed the crafting table. I crawled under it and into the hole, but obviously I wasn't going to leave the crafting table behind. I mined that and collected it. Now I had access to this whole new area. The first thing I noticed was a villager in the wall. His name was non-subscriber, and if I traded him a healthy fishing rod and a polished blackstone button, I could get a pig egg. Then I went down the hallway and found another villager. His name was subscribe, and he had a fishing pole and a blackstone button trade, but he would give me a vindicator spawn egg. It seemed like the puzzle of this room was figuring out which villager I needed to trade with. Then I saw this, a giant drop that I could land in water to survive, but the room was filled with creepers. On half a heart, this was basically a death sentence. There was no way I could kill all these creepers without taking at least half a heart of damage. I also had an anvil and a chest with a broken fishing rod, a broken bow, two arrows, and two EXP bottles. I knew what to do with the fishing rod right away. I combined them to get a healthy fishing rod. Now I had everything I needed to trade with one of these villagers. I could either get the vindicator spawn egg, or I could do the trade for the pig spawn egg. But at this point, neither of those trades seemed like they were going to help me at all. I went back to this room and started thinking about what I had to do. I had to clear this entire room of creepers if I was going to safely cross it, and all I had was the items in my inventory and this anvil. And then I started thinking, what would I need the anvil for? And that's when I realized what I needed to do. I went back and traded for the Vindicator spawn egg. Then I used my two EXP bottles to get me to at least level 1. See, if I had level 1, I could rename the egg, and there's something you can name a Vindicator spawn egg that heavily changes its properties. I named the egg Johnny, and by doing this, the Vindicator gets a lot more aggressive. It'll even aggro onto some mobs, and creepers are one of them. So I placed him in the pit and watched him go to work. It was like having a wolf that was 10 times stronger. He would run around the pit two-shotting every single creeper. And after about basically just a minute of watching him destroy creepers, the entire pit was cleared. But now I had a new problem. I now had a room with a massive aggressive vindicator in it, and killing him without taking half a heart of damage would be just as hard as the creepers. But this is where the bow comes into play. I had to make sure I landed both these shots or else I would have to kill the vindicator with my bare hands which would be very risky. The first shot connected and I was really happy. I just had to make sure I didn't miss the second. I was extremely nervous and I fired the shot. The bow broke but I actually managed to kill him. I mined through this chest to make sure there was nothing behind it, and there wasn't, so I was basically ready to move on to the next area. That's when I remembered there was one last thing I had to do. I went to the non-subscriber and started beating the crap out of him. This is what happens if you're not subscribed to the channel, don't forget. After I did that, I finally had taken care of all the business in this room, and I went ahead to drop down. I was careful to make sure I landed in the water because the fall damage would have killed me. I went to this corner of the room where I could clearly see the next hallway. I got a little bit of EXP from the Vindicator I killed with the bow, and now I started looking at this new problem. I was going to have to use my crafting table to get up here, which is sad because it's such a useful block. But I remembered it was here, and I was hopefully going to try to come back for it if I could. I was now in this long, wide hallway, and I started going to the end of it. At the end of the hallway, there was a room, and in the room, the first thing I noticed was this weird hole in the roof that had rain coming through it. This was obviously not an accident and was clearly going to have something to do with how I need to escape this room. Then I found this little hallway that was two blocks up so I couldn't reach it and I figured this is probably where I needed to go, but for now I didn't have blocks. Then there was a barrel. In the barrel was a trident, a shield, a zombie spawn egg, a creeper spawn egg, and a book. The book had channeling and on breaking three. Obviously that had to go on the trident. There was another room with a book and an anvil. I picked the book off the wall and read it. It said if you take the item from one chest, the other is destroyed. And at first, that didn't make sense, but there was two hallways. I went down the first one and found a chest with a pufferfish spawn egg. Now the book I read was starting to make some sense, so I was careful to leave the pufferfish egg where it was, and I went down the other identical hallway and found a similar chest that had a gas spawn egg inside of it. 
For now, I left both items because I wasn't sure which one I was supposed to take. I went to the anvil and tried to put the book on the trident, but I was way too short on levels. I only had one and I needed eight if I was going to enchant the trident. That was a lot. Killing any of the spawn eggs in my inventory still wouldn't even put me close to eight levels. So I had to think. I wasn't even really sure what to do in this room. Clearly, somehow I was supposed to use this rain and the channeling trident to make lightning, but I wasn't sure how that would help me escape, until I looked at the items in my inventory. If I could make a supercharged creeper and have it blow up the zombie, I would get a zombie head, and I could use that to build up to the doorway. So now I kind of had a plan of action, but there was still one problem I had to solve. I had to get 8 levels, and this was not going to be easy. It clearly involved one of these eggs, but killing neither of these mobs would get me there. But there was a trick I could do with one of them. It was the gas egg. So I went to the chest with the gas egg and took it. When I did, I heard TNT light. I stayed back so that I didn't take half a heart of damage. And when I went to this room, the pufferfish chest was gone. But that's okay because I got what I needed. See, there's a lot of ways in Minecraft to get EXP. One of the main ones is killing mobs. But there's one a lot of people don't know about. Certain advancements actually give you about 5 levels of EXP. And with a gas, I could do 2 at once. By killing it with its own fireball, I got the return to sender achievement and uneasy alliance achievement you get return to sender by sending the fireball back and you get uneasy alliance by killing a ghast in the overworld so now i could enchant my trident and i only had one problem left the creeper had to be standing in the rain when i hit it with the trident but there was another trick i could do to solve this easily see in minecraft there used to be a problem with mobs getting on people's railways so they changed the game so that mobs would not walk over rails by setting the rails up like this and spawning the creeper and the zombie, even in survival mode, they weren't able to walk to me. It's actually kind of funny to look at. It's funny that the rails are able to hold the mobs there. You know that they're trying to get to you, but it's like there's a wall. So I threw the trident at the creeper and boom, the lightning struck and now there was a supercharged creeper. I used the shield to make sure I didn't take any damage and blew up the zombie. And just like I thought, I got a zombie head. I picked up my trident and the surviving rails and I placed the zombie head. I was now able to jump on top of this ledge and had access to the new room. There was nothing really left for me here so I went ahead and started moving on. I started climbing up what ended up being a very, very long staircase. It felt like I was climbing to a boss fight. At the top, there was a book titled How to Escape. I picked it up and read it. It said use the TNT to tower up. Then I looked at this room to my left. It was a room filled with scattered TNT, a weird redstone contraption, and an arrow that looked like it pointed to the exit. There was also some water I could safely land in, but for now I held off. There was a chest next to me that had a snow block, a wooden shovel, and a spyglass. These items were a bit confusing, but I did use the spyglass to check out the room a bit better. I could see clearly that this was an exit in the wall now that I had to get to. I could also see right next to the water I had to land in there was a skulk sensor that would activate this dispenser in the middle of the room. And I started piecing together what I thought was going to happen. Some sort of a blaze or a skeleton was going to spawn that was going to shoot at me while I tried to collect the TNT. And since I was on half a heart, if any of them hit me I would die instantly. So I started preparing my inventory to get ready for a fight. I really wasn't too worried though because with a shield and a powerful trident I was pretty sure I was going to be okay. After I cleaned up my hotbar a bit, I dropped in. I was completely wrong about this room. It wasn't a skeleton or a blaze. I spawned in the warden, the strongest mob in the game. There was no way I could beat him on half a heart. I placed the snow block because I now knew what it was for. I mined it into snowballs. Then I broke this skulk sensor so it wouldn't give me away. See, the warden was blind. That means he didn't attack like the rest of the mobs in the game. He would only attack players that made enough noise to anger him. He also would occasionally smell. And when he did this, he would start moving towards the nearest player in the area. I had 4 snowballs I could use to distract him. If I threw the snowballs, the warden would hear them and start walking away from me. I had to be careful. I used my first one right off the bat to move him away and started focusing on collecting the TNT. I was making way too many mistakes. I was only halfway and I'd already wasted three snowballs. If I wanted to have any chance to escape this prison, I was going to have to do the second half flawlessly. 